Namhla nje kwi making moves so bekana nomkhakha wokunakekela impilo so ke sithi ukuvakashela epritoria ukuze sihlangabezane nala besimame abasiza imphakathi kuwona lomkhakha Odr Sakhumotso Mugabi umphathi wesikhungu somthola mpilo emabubani but I don't check your blood pressure. In the early right all along, but I care we just need to make sure every time. Only Seho Mashishi, Yena Umpasi web business, le occupational therapy, who's the fund as well as in that. Gerato Sabi decided in Tote Fan, ne? Lava Soma business, Ibazo Vagashela a studio, Uguza Pella Bewazo Tola Imbono, Ezo Sizama business abo. You don't actually have a business, you're selling your time. Ningizi Afrika umkhakha wokunakekela impilo uhlukanise ukusekelo somthola mpilo wa Hulmeni oxhaswa mahala bese kuphinde kube nesekelo sobuchwepheshe esitholwa kumkhakha wangasese mohla lo exercise umzimba wakho awusheshe ukhathale I don't have much time to exercise because I'm always going to school and studying Melo mo umuntu uhlale uzivoka vocini Noma uhulmeni enikela ngo 40% kusizo lomthola mpilo umkhakha womphakathi ungaphansi kwengcindezi yokukhiqiza usizo ku 80% wabantu Into engenza ukuthi ngibe healthy sihambe ksense siyojima ngidla ukudla oku oku healthy almost every day so I don't eat the right food but I do exercise Abesebenzi be occupational therapy babelekile kumkhakha wezempilo nokuthuthukisa imphakathi basebenzisa imsebenzi ehlukahlukene evumela abantu ukuthi befeze ukuzimela nokuthi bethuthukise izinga lempilo zabo Occupational therapists um usually I think they usually help you to guide you into finding a, a job or something Occupational therapist I think they help people in the organization they help like if you have questions about the everything in the organization that you don't understand then they help you with that they specialize with people who are disabled they advise you and counsel you in terms of how to keep healthy and how to maintain your health Abanye baziqalela izinkampani noma besebenzisane nezigule ezihluke kwiminyaka nemiphakathi kanye nezinhlangano ezifana nezibhedlela namaklinik Emthola mpile seqophelo neliphezulu hezinye zezidingoke ezidingwa yiwonakela amazwe langaphandle asafufuza njengoba ebesho ukuthi ke a healthy nation is a wealthy nation kodwa ke lana e South Africa u 80% of the population relies on public health services which is stretched and under resourced lokhu ke sekudala ukuthi abantu abaneziqu kubona ke lomkhakha baphume bayisunguleke ke ezabo inkundla ezokwazi ukuthi isize abantu njengayo uma business yethu oqala ophuma e ADE Women's Wellness Center Hello, welcome to my home, Mokarankua Unit 70. So we're gonna do this. We're gonna have fun. Mm-hmm. We're so again, I wanna look at my head. We're so much at school, Kukatakani Primary, in 1986. I was raised by my grandparents on my father's side till I was about five, and then I went and to live with my parents at home. And then I left again when I was 10 to go to boarding school. Came back first then at nine in the trick, which is just two years. During those years, she's, um, she was quite inspirational, like Nantu Sakahoba, Lakoskolong, how to do these speeches and perform poems when I was still in primary school. I've been writing poetry and scripts. I think my time go UCT was when I wrote a lot. How I wish he would wrap his arms around me. To hold me close till the end of time. For there in his arms I'd feel safe, surrounded by his scent that draws me From the beginning, Salarama support, the Gilovan. I said, I can't say what's of him. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. 
I had to make a decision that I could I could live with. It was it was hard. But in the end, I chose to, to stay in the field of medicine. And so I'm hoping I have a long enough life that uh, I can definitely come back into the art space. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> she loves books, 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 books. Like, when I'm in my room, I'm surrounded by books. I'm always surrounded by writing paper and I've got pens so that whatever comes into my head, I can write it down. Oh, hey, and they're going to win. Yeah, I know. The world champs, Nahan. I'm saying, you can see my wife, and I'm going to so much business with you. One of the things I'm saying is that I'm going to be able to do it. 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 I'm going to be able to She's the one who supervises. Come with me to our examination room. We have a curtain to ensure privacy. I can lay the women. And so this is our examination room. Mm -hmm. So once we're done chit-chatting in here, we come in here. And as you can see, the whole ambience comes through because it can be quite um, daunting to be in here because you can see a lot of things. Yeah, exactly. So <laughs> you can imagine a woman is just thinking, Dr. Utlung Keta Eng when you yeah. get in here. So they just comfortably sit on the bed initially. Mm -hmm. uh, then I would check their blood pressure. So let yeah. check your blood pressure. In the LA, right, they all along. But Akere, we just need to make sure every time. And then Renale, the least favorite, Yabasadi. Well, one of the least favorite. Measuring tape? Measuring tape. Well, measure the waist circumference, Yabasadi. Yeah. And the reason, Kekore, the more fat a person has around waist, Yabona, the more balling at risk of heart conditions. Does the same apply to men? The same applies to men. Okay. So, Arata, measure. All right. Um, and Serena, let's on a happy Different blood tubes, very colorful. Yeah, okay, it's for a purpose. Pinky. So, this is for CD4 count and viral load. Mm -hmm. Now, Pap's making one of the tests in Longkoro Basadi, but he dreaded a lot. In the clinics, Khoberiki siwe ya tipi, which is cold, it's hard, it's heavy, it's uncomfortable for a woman. So we get the plastic ones and the disposable. Why did you say Then you throw it away. Then you don't need the big bright light. You only need to see. Uh -huh. Exactly. So Basadi ba feel khoro ba relax, ba comfortable. There's no spotlight on them, only for what? Sinel khoro ke tloka khose bon. And of course, the ultrasound. So we don't have anything to worry about. The head is where it's supposed to be. Your blood pressure is good. Everything is going as planned. Okay. All right. More to fit in Rebu, you know, a bit more business here and get to find out when Tagala and I think I'm all right. You left public sector because you know you're a bit unhappy for industry in you, but you are still in the same industry if we look at it right now. Can you difference into your tongue on a no with what you're doing previously? Well, public sector is over 80 percent of the population. Yes. Um, and really, there is a need in the public sector. Marasia, I felt more like a firefighter yeah. um, than a medical doctor because I was running around putting out medical emergencies. Um, and Hake and I into the private sector for the first time, Kiberekele male GP. I noticed that women form 80% of the consulting population. Mm. And then when I was working in his practice, and they would come and seek me out about the specific information. Mm. So I thought, why not do it? 
but the beauty, yeah, the private sector, I can interact with women in a way that I want. Okay, okay, so family history. How do you get your LMP? Okay, blood pressure and sugar. Okay. So the consultation uh, services offer an cut on a more high kids thing, and you know, but how about limo? But for what kind of needs? Bom me have limo. Even though kids are women's wellness services, so moto otweriki a cold, otweriki flu, onali anemia, we will treat that. But also looking at what we're not otweriki flu three times in a month. What's the underlying problem? What's the problem? We need to find out what why your immune system is not able to take care of you. And the last one, kids lifestyle support. How can level la? This shelf, this is what lifestyle support is about. We get products along called Disapota Basadi in being Mosadi. Probably yeah. like the menstrual products. So, Hona Lady pads, we know about them. But a lot of women don't know about a soft cup, which allows a woman to, um, if, you're, if you're a swimmer, you can swim using a soft cup. It's a new product. So what we do is we look outside the outside South Africa to look. We found this one in Canada. I've learned a lot about your industry, and you know, learn maybe one day about what other imports are getting like Tessie Fino. But if you like it, I'll refer to it. No, but I'll tell you why. But I'll check it out. It's a consulting. Now we're not talking about the studio, ne? All right. Thank you, Anis. Are you running a business, or are you just selling your services really as an individual? So you're selling your time. But what we're really about is preventative healthcare. Is your target market buying that? According to World Health Organization, South Africa has a very high maternal mortality ratio. When Humuto started at there, the vision was to focus on preventative health care for women to deal with issues of maternal mortality. Kotwage, intase itoli logo tige, ama kasme nda kama ning, aza gu business lag, awa seven zisi zonke izi into anazo, ez nga basiz. Jenga man, yose studio se, tu kongu sana nadi, ugu usche la utama challenges apigana na ungeze business, uwa bambaga njani igeyen. Sia kia lebu wa mshana nkhunu, Dr. Khumuzo Mokhapi, welcome to this Entrepreneur Dialogue on Making Moves. Thank you for having me, Pepsi. Let's start and get straight into it. Tell me about the business. How do we classify it? Is it profitable? Is it running at a loss? Is it breaking even? It's surviving. It's breaking even. We've just restructured, so we're doing things differently, so we're starting to see a little bit of a pickup. Are you running a business or are you just selling your services really as an individual? So you're selling your time. Initially, when we started, really, I was selling my time. Uh, what, when I say we've restructured, what we have done is we have uh, productized our services so that it does not solely depend on me, so that at some future time, we can bring in somebody else to also provide those products, so to speak. Explain the concept of, of productizing your business. What does that mean in the context of your business? So as a health practitioner, because I'm wearing two hats, as a health practitioner working in my business, what I used to do before was sell my time. Somebody would walk in, um, I would provide them with a consultation, and they would walk out. So we, we were never quite clear what somebody would be coming in for. But our focus has always been to provide preventative healthcare services. And when I started thinking about it and working and with other people and looking at the motor industry really to say when your car, before your car breaks down, you take it in, there are standard procedures that are going to be done. What do those entail in terms of a woman walking in? So that's when we develop our screening services. The first one is a bouquet. So a woman walks in and says, I would like a bouquet for myself. And there's a standard um, questionnaire that they would fill in and there are standard questions that the doctor would ask and measurements that would be taken and tests that would be run. So that's what productizing our services is. A woman walks in, either they're looking for screening services, a young girl will be looking for the lady, um, somebody else will be looking for red balance, those are the different services. Once we're done with the screening, then we'd move them to the next product line, which is our lifestyle intervention plan. Because what we're really about is preventative health care. So then there, if a woman wants to control when she would be getting pregnant, she would get something like Jersey Joy to control her fertility. So those services are productized in the sense that you pick one and any of the service providers can do that. It's not based on me and my personality anymore. Are you not selling something that is people don't really want, they need it, but they don't particularly know that they need it, nor do they necessarily want it. People seem to want to go to the doctor when they're sick. Uh, I'm happy you brought that up 
because I was naive when I started the business and thinking people need this because I've worked in the public sector and I've seen how people are dying of unnecessary um, medical conditions. So when I started, I thought people would be flocking in and that was not the case. So it was important for me to establish an education system to empower the women to say, you've got two options really, that's what I'm offering, you've got two options. Either you wait and you get sick um, and it impacts your life, your work, your family, um, and the quality of your life. I'm not really concerned with death. That sounds horrible, but it comes to all of us. But the quality of your life is more important in doing the things you want to do, realizing your goals and your vision. Imagine if you couldn't be here because you were sick and you had to be bedridden. Or you can come to a wellness center when you're healthy and we can do an analysis of where are you in terms of your health, where you're likely to go looking at your family history and your lifestyle, and then how we can impact that to ensure that you go where you need to go. So you buy that? Yes. Is your target market buying that? Well, we've got 600 women on our database currently, so they're buying it. And they are so happy that the majority of the women that we get are referrals. So I would go, then I would tell my mother and my sister because I've seen what the challenges are. So it's, it's still important to educate people because they are used to a curative model of healthcare. So they don't even know this exists. So with 600 people on the database or 600 women on the database, why are you not flying? You should be making a massive profit. 600 people is a lot of people. You must remember that um, our model is keeping people healthy. Now, if I'm keeping you healthy, there's no reason for you to come back. You understand so we had to devise a business model that says fine we're keeping people healthy but how do we keep the business running so there are those that would come in and they would have their screening and there's nothing wrong with them and it's not necessary to put them on a plan what we do have for those who don't have a lifestyle intervention plan that they need is then their general consultations so a lot of men don't know about um, sexual health they don't know about menstrual health they don't know about vaginal wellness. So they would come in for that kind of consultation or to just talk about their life and their vision for themselves. And what we're starting to implement now are seminars as well to be able to support the women in the life that they want to live, those who are already healthy and they don't need the other services. And we're also looking at opening a product range to support women with products that we find work so for them. So that, that's, that's, that's where I was going, is that it doesn't sound like the current model is sustainable. Yeah, when I, when I started, I was really just frustrated. I thought, I need to keep people healthy. Uh, medical school doesn't teach anything regarding business. So what I've started doing, and it really, it was out of a need for what the women wanted, is identifying products that women need that they find difficult to source out there to be able to support them in being women. Um, these are menstrual products, these are sexual health products, that they can come to somebody that they trust who's keeping them healthy and supporting their lifestyles a healthy lifestyle, but overall just being a well woman. Fantastic, so there is a broad plan, you know where you wanna go. I'm gonna introduce you to someone who is gonna spend some time with you and may help you build that roadmap to where you want to go. Okay, great. Thank you to Dr. Fomoto Mohapi for sharing her story with us and for the wonderful work that she's doing for the community of Mabopane. I'm going to send her off to a coaching session with Ms. Malibana Makafula from Mars Healthcare's SA so that she can get some advice on how she can turn her wellness center into a successful business. While she's doing that, let's enjoy this wisdom nugget. Accept criticism because you're not going to make it unless people criticize you is persevere you know if you persevere you can't and you work hard and you take criticism you can't go backwards in life you have to move forward understand that the road is going to be tough understand that you're not going to make quick easy money there's no such thing as quick easy money at the age of 13 my father Gena Alarcia. Yeah, then became the head of the family. It was very difficult to, to adjust. I'm an occupational therapist. Adala ikaza el kuluga kulu lezo mtolampilu. Upindo kumbuli, foot by best season, ukututukisa yonagele mpagati lena esafufuza. However, 
many black communities are still not much exposed to this profession. As a result, there is less competition for black businesses in this field. And my older brother and my younger sister. As a baby, it was nice to, to actually play with her. Sometimes I used to tease her, in fact, uh, and I would make her cry and all those things. Those were happy times. At the age of 13, my father gena alarisia. After that, nikisizili my brother and my younger sister only. And then at the age of 17, yes, then mewaka alarisia lien. I then became the head of the family. For, from teenagehood, I, uh, I was raised by my brother. Uh, uh, I was very fortunate to have a younger sister like, like Leseo. She was actually very focused on her studies. My mom, they could afford her to good schools. And then, Christmas, like, the minute Annalisio, it was very difficult to, to adjust, you know, because sometimes, somehow, refitil, you know. <laughs> I have about two friends that, that like Huba adventurous, ne? so they always, we always try to introduce a new activity for one. So if I really bungee jumping or we must go horse riding. I always tease the karaoke guards, you know, she's so soft, she's so smooth, she listens, she's calm. I think what makes Mioho happy is laughter. <laughs> Nali and I, we quite big socialites. So, I mean, put us in one room, I believe, you know, we can quite mingle with others. I have a very soft, soft spot for my friends, Bani Banalina, before my parents passed, you know, because they, 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 they carried me. They got pocket money, so when I found to get my first phone, the metric dance, they paid for my metric dance. If there was felt school, go school long, they paid for it. Lesero is a very determined person. Kimun uh, Tualering, when, when she puts something, you know, when she, she thinks of something, with you know. No problem. Yeah. Uh, what made you rip? You want to start your own business? Because this seems like it's a tricky industry only in Goyona and not a lot of, you know, but what made you decide you want to start your own business? You know, I had the opportunity to say Modi private practice day too. They did very well established, very professional. 
also uh, my love for the profession and wanting to explore more. What's about get house service? Let's about one the system zabona. So I found myself kibata who explore other things about OT and then kibata who ba creative create other things. So I needed to create spaces that can more learning get to practice OT my own way. Mm. Who is a typical and limitless client? Typical client, keep back about long from the lawyer, but made by made colleague. Mm. How much as a limit? I want to know a how we link thing, but I limit the so home. Then not a milky much to sort of who tell it back into their normal lives. So Kisheba, Bupilova, one a high. Pelo Skolong, socially, Musevetzing, and then Keba Tusa Horbari gain strength or Bari gain function Yabona, Horba Hutele back into their normal lives. So, are these some of the things uh, an occupational therapist needs for her items? Is why? Yeah, no, definitely. When I'm talking about the equipment, the more very specifically OT related, uh, the more very specifically OT related equipment. Eki hydraulic hand dynamometer. Yeah, I want to know what's hand assessment. Yeah, as you know, you know, how many matters it's on one hand. That's now on. If it tests your grasp and grip strength. Okay, Bresa. Let's go there. Bresa. Hey, let's go. Let's go. Okay. So this is the developmental test of visual perception. Mm -hmm. no? It's just a picture book, and then there's also more um, more thing or drawing thing. So it wants how you're planning, your processing, your visual perception, and all of that. Kids are thing more. They eat and they eat. Oh. Mm -hmm. And then a D. Okay. Uh, believe it or not, then I get about to Baba Hole. Gay, Harry Clotted into the crafts and things like that. So, get out of the service deciding to say fun, mm -hmm. but to simulate the, um, what might happen in a home situation. Scanner, how much to appear? Utlamela Richard Cabotti, a bed in Tomona, so nice there for Kitty said you jolly in. Kitla Sabbath, say body pen, the body in, or I say the craft sells it different, depending on her give a lava to Sakai. We are being go high and Ukraine moto to some Kumaga or Sete, Santa Mui Uzama, we get it. I know our team, I cannot eat here or one to shall know. Assessment is a basic, simple assessment. I don't accident. So, Baba Tahu created a general idea. You have three to four hours. You can assess it medically. You can assess it in therapy. Then, you can assess it in two sessions. So, you can assess it in two sessions. So, you can assess it in two hours. Working for my sister is very interesting. Guy two that had that through her relationship we are at work uh, between Nalo Osaka is very professional. When when we in the office, we in the office. When I submit the report, that she is expecting them to be Godzilla egg thing. When it comes to charging and making sure for okay now Utopela let's say a working in client or otopela mm -hmm. the attorneys mm -hmm. how do you work out your time or ba otloba pela bokana o otlomo pela this certain amount we normally adhere to the prices that are out there like uh, the the prices that are set by our association yeah, the OTs, mm -hmm. but medical aids libona honali code ya injar so the price is already set Mm. So, rate that you know, ordering it's governed by you know the governing body for lack of a better way, <laughs> they are more high. What is it? Uh, for for the outpatient, mm -hmm. normally it can range for from 400 to 500 per hour. Okay. Yeah. 
So go far, step of approval, and I'm serious about it. Oh, thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you very much. Lewa Holo, Mbae, Serious also Feli, you are going to studio, Sarona, and making moves. We've got law firms that want you to say somebody's injured, <laughs> maybe when they're not. How do you keep your integrity in that kind of situation? The Seco owns three occupational therapist practices. Kenga Yoguti, a bear cup and abandoning Gabana, so is Yukuk Sevens a one and umkak. Logu Talogu Tigumela Fuanis is Katsak, Uoma Tatugela, my practice. Kotwage Logu, Ngapinda Gutale in Goose, Gobage Pella, Agawas Gutani as a Macasman, is Katsao Sonk, Gamun and Gamun. Kot, who's a studio Nazi and Amshanj, who was jail out to business like Ulbona Likula, Liagup, Noguti, Wenza Ranja and Gonke Logu. How are you? I'm good, thank you. How are you? I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. So, your business is in a tricky place. You've got law firms that want you to say somebody's injured, <laughs> maybe when they're not. Mm -hmm. And you've got the road accident fund that wants you to say no, they're not injured, yeah. when they maybe are. How do you keep your integrity in that kind of situation? Well, what helps most of the time is that we have, we actually have standardized testing tools and systems. So you can't really crook the results. So you, you actually interpret what the test has given you. That, that makes it easier to, you know, to remain objective. But that means I can do your job? Not necessarily. You need to be trained to use the test. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So, but that helps us, that helps me keep objective. But I also keep in mind that uh, I'm dealing with an individual. So whether it's for the the defense, the road accident fund, or it's for the plaintiff, the lawyers, at the end of the day, I'm dealing with an individual, with children, with, with people's lives. So that always centers me that I must remain ethical and make sure that people get compensated the way they're supposed to. Why did you get into business? So what are the things you were hoping to get out of being in business? All right. I think after having worked for numerous practices and for the government, I felt that the profession still had so much more to offer. So I wanted to be more innovative, come up with new systems, new ideas, and uh, develop the profession because there's room for that. So when you're wo working for someone or for you, always have to comply to what what they would like the output to be. So I needed a bit more space to be creative and and just to spread my wings. So is that the only reason you got into business? And for the money. And for the money. <laughs> okay. So which leads me to my next question: Is the business doing what you want it to do for you? From a profit point of view. Well, I mean, you said you got into business so you could be more creative. Mm -hmm. Are you being more creative? Yes. Okay. However, and so that you could make more money. Yeah. Are you yeah. making more money? Well, I am being more creative. However, I now have a challenge of actually following through with these new ideas and these these uh, new ventures that I want to get in within OT because the business still needs so much of my time. So that's my challenge. That's what I need to now focus on, you know, actually bringing those new ideas into life. But in terms from a profit point of view, definitely. But they still, I can still do more. I should actually be doing more. So is one of your problems the fact that, firstly, I'm glad you're making money, uh, which is fantastic. So you're ticking the one box of why you got into business. Mm. The second, in terms of wanting to be more creative, wanting to innovate, you're not able to do because yeah. you've got your head in the business. Does the fact that you've got three practices in three different areas have anything to do with that? <laughs> yes, well, the way you ask that. Mm. But no, definitely yes. Uh, we are looking at possibly the Woodbank branch is the one that if we decide to close it, we'll, we will close that one. But uh, nail spray and Pretoria will remain because now we are gaining capacity. We are employing people to be able to, uh, you know, run those two practices. Okay, but now not are all three branches profitable? Mm -mm. <laughs> which one, which ones are profitable and which ones are not? Uh, the Pretoria and the Woodbank branch are all right. They can run you know, uh, operational costs are always covered. The Whitbank branch is still being supported by the other branches, but that is if we look at it on a monthly basis. But if we look at it annually, 
the Wood Bank branch is actually making enough to cover and run itself. It's just the cash flow is not... So it may as... not be worth your while for now. Yeah, but the people are always worth the while. No, no, absolutely. Mm. I mean, but, you know, you're not, you're not an NGO. More... Yeah, uh, I know, but... a business to run. That's... While you are seeing most of the clients, mm -hmm. while you are the one consulting, you don't actually have a business. You're selling your time. Mm. You just mm. happen to be selling it on behalf of yourself <laughs> and not somebody else. No, no, definitely. Yeah, and I can, uh, you know, uh, because every now and then we need to go out and market the business. And I do not have the time for that because I'm still engrossed in the, you know, in the actual seeing of patients and making sure that everything runs well. So, so congratulations, yeah. you just created yourself a job. What is my position? <laughs> occupational therapist. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, I get you. No, but that's you're graduating true. from there to business owner. Yes. Okay. Yes. How are you going to grow beyond the law firms and the road accident fund? Well, another department at Limitless OT is corporates and companies. So actually selling them employee wellness packages, disability management packages, absentee management. Um, packages so that is a, a leg that I need to start focusing on and developing and making sure that we secure business from that angle well I'm going to send you off to someone who's okay. going to help you further along the way and then we'll chat briefly after I'm that I'm looking forward to that we hope that her story inspires young black South Africans to take an interest in this field of occupational therapy. I'm sending her off for her coaching session with Mr. Neo Ramapakela and we'll catch up later with her for feedback on her coaching session. Komuto is now back from her coaching session with Mr. Makafula. They're going to give us some feedback on how the session went. Dad, how is the business of Komuto Ufumaning? What is her biggest challenge? Her biggest challenge is separation of powers, second product identification or marketing, and then exposure to the world out there so that she can make it. Okay, so you found, uh, I need to understand it better. So the first challenge is that. Uh, marketing, so it's our market, market uh, a bit the product, more. Yeah, more. The second one is she's got to create uh, products, products that she can sell. And the third? Uh, the third one is separating herself from, separate, when I say separation of powers, her role, the business must continue to run whether she's in or not in. Mm. In that, Once you've trained people, they'll be self-sufficient, su sustainable, and then she comes only when doing diagnosis and analysis of the records. That's fair. So it means that the business continues loudly sequel because I've heard already you'll travel around the world with uh, the South African sports teams and do this and that, which means and hopefully that's another passion of mine because mostly uh, women in the sporting field. So for now, what Nzeri said is like, we would have a low-camp doctor, a nurse, Adler. But as I said, because Nebasa are trained mm -hmm. to do preventative health care, nearly a bit of a challenge. So with what Ndati Makafula has said, if I can train them properly, gather new systems, study developing, then I would be able Lena, to pursue other things that I'm passionate about. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah. And then just, is this an opportunity for other doctors and other entrepreneurs in other parts of the country. Uh, I think there's something here. It feels like there's an opportunity. Is it an opportunity? It's not an opportunity for everybody. There are those that are concentrating on preventative health care or curative health care. You come in, you're sick, you get whatever, then you leave. She identified her niche, and then that niche needs to be served well, and then that creates a long-term relationship. So. You've got the plan. What's the first thing you're going to do to start changing the business? Well, um, marketing. Because if we can increase our numbers, then um, increase our revenue so that we can have more money to implement the other things that we need. Um, 
So what we will do is from our women also get contacts um, because they are referring anyway. So maybe we can meet them halfway in getting those other women to come in for the service that they need. Um, so that's the first thing. And seeing how we can use the media as well, interacting with other women in a better way to grow our center. These services can be extended to corporates because corporates are not looking at having high absenteeism because of sicknesses people are having. She can reduce that and then from the then increase her revenue from the side. That is a very, very good point. I mean, uh, uh, employers will invest in making sure that their employees don't get sick. And that's perhaps another area where you can market. What do you think of that? Um, absolutely. Um, the challenge was just identifying companies still on Hora, mostly they employ women, because our service is for women, by women. So it is food for thought to see how we structure that harrier to the corporates. Guys, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, and you. I hope that this has been a positive experience for you. It definitely And that was. you've taken something away from it. Yes, I have. Thank you. After the break, we find out from Lisejo how her session has changed her thinking. We'll be back in a moment. Is she ready for three branches? Should <coughs> Nell Sprait and Pretoria reflect each other? If I were you. Okay. Two branches closed. Welcome back. More and they're gonna tell me about their coaching session and how all of that went. I'm going to start with you, Lesoko. How was it for you? It was wonderful. Definitely uh, very insightful. And uh, Neo here gave me practical steps of what I need to do to get my business to the next level. So it was, it was wonderful. You know what I love about her? Mm. Other than the, just the good cheer, the passion, when you speak to her, how do you not actually want to help? How do you not? Yeah, how do you not? No? How do you not? Um, and I think that's why the business has grown to this point. Because people are coming there for you. Now, the first thing that she needs to do is move herself away from the business. And, you know, create, um, you need to brand it. She needs to brand it. She needs to brand Limitless in such a way that people can identify with who she is. Maybe but talk in to the business. In the business. Yeah. In the business. So, so that she, she needs, doesn't have to see them personally. She needs for to them multiply to have the yes. Lesicho experience. The Lesicho experience. Okay. Yeah. It's a very strong point. When people say limitless, when people talk about limitless, do they does it does it explain what limitless actually does? So you need to think about how the brand is gonna, you know, be received wherever you plant it, wherever you and how you can grow it from there. Mm. Firstly, secondly, building systems so that you can actually move away from the, from the business. You know, that, that's absolutely important because at the moment she has to be there. She has to do the paperwork. So yeah. here's my question. Mm. Is she ready for three branches? Because she's running Nelspreit, Whitbank, Pretoria, yeah. and she's trying to divide her time Into as a therapist three. and a manager and an entrepreneur. Yes, mm. okay. Is, is she, she ready for that? No, not yet. What I would do, if I were you, okay. two branches closed. Create systems in the one branch, so therefore you've got a formula to multiply. How can I not do with both? How can you not? I'll do that. Uh, no. Okay, no, 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 the two of you. Chachala <laughs> <laughs> sometimes what you're doing is you're just preparing yourself to go and do a national mm. rollout. Mm. And his fear, is that if you roll it out with oh. bits and pieces yes. without mm. a solid base, yes. it's going to unravel. Yeah. I'm surprised it hasn't unraveled. No, it Between will not unravel. Pretoria, <laughs> which she's a fighter. No, no, it will not. no, no she's, a fighter. she's a fighter. But that's why I mean, it's still... Could you not do as much business in Pretoria alone if you focused on building that while getting ready for a national rollout as you do in all the other places? All right, I think to find some middle ground, we were reviewing Woodbank. Okay. Okay. We were reviewing Woodbank, looking at, but Nelspreet and Woodbank are in the same province. Mm -hmm. So we can, and it's, it's not operationally, it's not sustaining itself. So mm -hmm. that we are looking at 
um, removing. Okay. But the Pretoria and the nail spray uh, have to stay. Should <coughs> nail spray and Pretoria reflect each other? So when you walk into Limitless in Pretoria, you have the same experience, the same feeling from all, the way it looks round, to the round, process. Yes, yes. It's the same as nail spray. Yes. If you can do that in both places, and they mirror each other, it's easy and it to feels like you're having a limitless experience, and it's exactly the same, regardless of where you go, you know, a bit like a pizza franchise. Yeah. You know, Hore, you're going to get the same that. pizza in Cape Town, Bloemfontein, Northwest, or Gauteng. Mm. And I think that's, that's the point. So if you can do it in both places, then you, you're on to something. Look, the point is systems. Focus yeah. on your systems. Yeah. Step away from the technician mode. Yes. Like we spoke of. She's in technician mode. She's not an entrepreneur at the moment. Mm. Let me experience Lesejo, even with Lesejo not being in front mm. of me. Yeah. yeah. And um, brand it. Brand mm. it, brand it well, and push the brand. Mm. Guys, thank you very much. I've had fun with both of you. <laughs> um, and I've learned one or two things myself. You've given me some stuff to think about. And I suppose that's the thing about entrepreneurs. We don't always listen. But you've taken some advice. As long as you take some of it on, no, um, yeah. part of what makes us who we are is that we're a little bit stubborn, yes. and we're going to get on with it because we believe in in our passions That's and, it. and in our dreams. Yeah. So thank you so much for joining us. Yeah? Thank you. Thank, okay. thank you. you. Thank you for having me. Lesiko and Komoto are not just entrepreneurs, they're also community builders. And I hope that their stories will inspire you to start thinking on how you can use your skill, perhaps whatever profession you have to develop your community while making a business out of it. We'd like to see more of these wellness centers and occupational therapists in townships. Until next week, cheers from the Making Moves team. My overall experience of being on Making Moves was that it was quite beneficial for me and for my business. Um, blind spots in my, businesses, in my business were highlighted and the questions that Pepsi had to ask also helped me think and what Mr. Makafula had to say in the coaching session also helped. My overall experience of being on Making Moves was absolutely transformational. I've, I got to look at my business while on the outside and actually analyze how we can take Limitless OT to the next level to provide more services, yield greater profits. So it was definitely a transformational experience.